Well, uh, welcome again as we do some real life testimonies and um, it's my privilege to uh, talk to Kirsty um, today. Um, Kirsty came to our church a long time ago, um, really on fire for God. A lot of things have happened in between time, but what she's going to do right from the beginning is just tell us a little bit about how she first came to Christ and then what the Lord's been doing in the last couple of weeks. So, hello Kirst, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you, Steve. So, um, my testimony really is uh, a bit awkward. I, I wasn't truthful when I first gave my testimony of what um, I'd been through in my childhood and different things. Um, so, I'll just give you a little brief background and then I'll tell you how God uh, changed my life around. Yeah, cool. Um, so, when I was younger, I was abandoned by my mum and uh, my dad and my stepmom thank god we had a great stepmom who brought us up and uh, obviously I went through abuse by my uncle and ended up going to court and different things through that and then um, I turned to alcohol and I was a real heavy drinker um, you know that was a really bad period in my life where uh, every day I would have a drink and I wouldn't not drink I had to drink to get by and get through um I suppose like uh, in all of that time I started doing like tarot cards Ouija boards I got mixed up in some really bad stuff and then uh my first relationship with somebody was really bad. It was a domestic abuse relationship, like he really beat on me and different things. So I really, um, I went through a lot of the things as a young girl. And then obviously um, my dad's a bit of a Dell boy and he started up a market uh, store in, in Great Bridge. And that's where I met Katie. And um, I attended Katie's church for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just something to do on a Sunday. It wasn't because I, oh, you know, I madly loved God or anything like that. It was just that um, my sister wanted to go and I was taking her for a short while. Um, and then oh, I must have gone for about two years before um, I decided that, yeah, okay, then this is probably for me. I want what they've got. I want that peace, that love, that joy, you know, that excitement mm -hmm. and... It was just a, a, a process, really. It took about two years of me going to church every weekend. And um, Pastor Paul was the pastor at the time, and he did a, a call for people to go forward and give their life to Jesus. And I honestly, I don't know what he was talking about. I can't remember to this day, but I know that the Holy Spirit like just overwhelmed me, and I had to go to the front and give my life to Jesus. Uh, Everything didn't change instantly. It wasn't like a miracle that my life suddenly changed. It was a hard process of making right decisions and going on the right path. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't. It wasn't like straightforward. Like some people have instant miracles, and sometimes it's a long process to get to where you need to be. Um, I've gone out to church a little bit, and that's when I come to your church. Mm -hmm. um, and it really did bless me attending the church and then I, I fell out of church again you know I'm a bit of a backslider but I've come back now I'm you know I'm fully for God now um, it's just it's weird how experiences in your life and you can't it's like I don't know how to explain it but I couldn't totally give up everything to God I was trying to keep my own control as well so that I could do things in my own way. But I've really learned over a long time that it's not possible to do things your own way. You have to do it with God on your side. You can't just be half in and half out. It doesn't work. You need to be fully committed. Absolutely. You need to make decisions every day to show, to show that God is the place that you need to be. But I felt lost for a long time. I mean, uh, you know, even commit, like trying to commit suicide and different things like that, you know, it's been a really emotional roller coaster. But mm. thank God, like, I've never had so much joy or peace or anything ever in my life. This is the best moment ever. Even though we're all locked down, 
we can't go to church and we can't do anything but I just want people to know you can always pick up a Bible you can always go on YouTube to find God and your uh, Facebook have really blessed me Steve so really really like I can't explain to you how much it's moved me to see people being totally honest you know and oh it's just a really big blessing so you were you were a little bit away from from God and then obviously during the lockout you started to tune in and then one yeah. of the nights I know I was preaching it and, and you kind of made a response and say I'm back I'm back with God I'm, I'm wholehearted with this so that's absolutely fantastic it's really good yeah, it really blesses me to hear that there's, you know, so many people from different backgrounds. I think people think that you've got to be perfect to come to God, and that's not the way that you have to be. Mm -hmm. God wants us just as we are, you know. And I, I've learned, I've learned a few things. Obviously, um, where I was before, um, my mind wasn't straight. It was all over the place, you know, trying to do things in my own power, and it just doesn't work properly. You know, and I now know that my self-worth is an in, um, trying to find uh, love and affection off people. My, my self-worth is having love and affection off God. And I know that God loves me beyond any, any stretch of imagination. I know that God is what I need in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many others that have experienced, you know, similar things need God in their life as well. Yeah. And it's the only answer it is the only answer and we've been singing in church recently um about god leaving the 99 and, and coming to find the one and i guess um that's what's happened to you over these last few weeks and you know we've not seen you in church for a long while but you know god's moved your heart back which is amazing you know the good shepherd always goes after his sheep and um there's a lot of people in church you've not met yet you have a lot of testimonies you've seen online some of the guys that you've never ever shook hands with or, or met or put your arms around, but very soon you're going to. And essentially, I want you to know that there's going to be a whole bunch of people come together that you've never met before. And this is the doing of God. And we're just rejoicing in it, aren't we? So, Kirst, I'm going to pray for you and I pray for everybody else before we go. Thank you for just being so honest about where you are in God. I think that honesty is, is shining through in everybody's testimony. We're not where we should be, but thank God we're not where we were. And so, Father, hey. so, uh, yeah. Do you mind if I just share one scripture just yeah, to help yeah. anybody out there? Yeah, you do. Um, it, it's Matthew eleven twenty eight, and it says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And I just want you to know that Jesus really does give you rest. You know, mm -hmm. you need to just take that step in faith, and I swear it's the best decision you ever make in your life. Amen. That's really good. Father, we just want to thank you for Kirsty. Thank you that she's got a passion for you in a way, Lord Jesus, she hasn't had for years. And I just pray for her and for a whole of her family that you continue to bless them. But Lord, I pray through the words that she's been honest enough to speak to us tonight, that God, you'll draw many hearts to you. We're excited, Lord, we might be locked in, but we're not definitely locked down. And we know that your gospel is going out right across the internet. And there are dozens, if not hundreds and thousands of people yet to hear your word. And so we pray for your blessing right now. We pray that you'd be with us. And thank you again for the honesty. And uh, would you just go with us now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Kirsty, thank you so much. I know your broadband connection is a bit wobbly because you had a fire behind your house and you're coming on your three on your 4G. So thanks for that. It was, it was as clear as we could get it. But thank you. It was really clear in terms of what you've said. And uh, we love you. And the second church is open. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Oh, Okay, mate. Bye-bye. Okay.